first new video in quite some time now, quite a large number of months. And uh, I'm pretty happy because in this video, I'm going to be talking about something I got to pick up recently, which is the PS3 Slim. And I've wanted to pick one of these up for quite some time, but they weren't really dropping in price at all. But uh, thankfully, recently, I got the opportunity to buy one for a pretty decent price, and it came with uh, a few games as well. And basically, what this video is going to be is it's going to be sort of a first impressions video. Like, um... And kind of a review as well. Basically, what I think of the PS3 Slim, because I've had it for a few weeks now, I've been playing it quite a bit, and um, I'm just here to share what I think of it, and uh, yeah, well, first of all, it definitely isn't that slim, it's uh, actually quite large. Scary thing is, it's still smaller than the original PS3. Um, this is just, this is gigantic. I think it might even dwarf the Xbox 360, the original model, which was a pretty big system. Because, uh, I mean, just look, this is the PS3 Slim, and I got over here, just for comparison's sake, my PS2 Slim, which is tiny. This thing's, like, puny compared to this thing. But uh, from what I understand, they actually did recently come out with another model of PS3 Slim that's like even smaller and apparently has a disc flap instead of a disc uh, slot. Like, uh, in this you would just sort of pop the disc in and it'll slide in. Uh, but it's I hear the new one is like the PS2 Slim and the old PS1 where you push a button and it you know, pops up like that, which I'm personally not a big fan of, because they, they're they really fragile sometimes. They kind of, like, the, even this, I think my PS2's uh, disc flap is a little screwed up. But uh, I really like, you know, disc trays, and then what the PS3 has, uh, what the Wii had. But uh, overall, I just, uh, I really like this console so far. Uh, it is a bit large, but... You know, it, it doesn't take up too much space. It's definitely slimmed down from the original PlayStation 3 model, which was this colossal uh, game console. It was absolutely massive. And um, another thing I kind of like about this, because I did... I used to know someone who had an original model PS3, and I remember... The old, the, the charging cords for the controllers on the old models, I recall being very short. I might be wrong, but I recall them being incredibly short. This is the charging cable that came with the Slim that I got. And uh, as you can see, it's actually very long. It's com entirely possible now to actually play a game, you know, while your controller is charging without having to like kneel down in front of the console or some shit like that. But um the PS3 Slim, I don't know that it was the first model of PS3 that took out the PS2 compatibility because I know that was removed very early on. Um but it still retains backwards compatibility with PlayStation 1 games, which uh is pretty cool. Because, um, you know, I've been meaning to get a uh, another PS1 memory card for quite some time, but I've been just, you know, too lazy, too many other things I've wanted to get. And this sort of remedies that problem because of how you can sort of create these, like, virtual memory cards, or whatever they're called, on the hard drive, so you can just have as many saves as you want across all your PlayStation games without having to go out and buy more mem memory cards, because they're not expensive, but there are quite a few PlayStation 1 games that I've been wanting to get, and so inevitably I'd have to buy more, but thanks to this, I don't have to. So now, what I'm going to do, uh, I've gone on for a bit about uh, how I feel about the PS3 Slim as a piece of hardware, I'm going to talk about some of the games I have for it. Now, it came with three games, and I'll point out which ones are the ones that came with it. And then, um, after that, 
I traded in a bunch of my Xbox 360 stuff and a few other little things to get about six more games for PS3 because I am completely switching from Xbox 360 to PlayStation 3 because I am liking this console a lot more, like, uh, especially in terms of its exclusives. Uh, I played a few, I have a few of them and I've played a few demos and I've got to say I'm really impressed, much more so than I was with the Xbox 360's lineup. But um, starting out, we'll just get straight into these. Um, Borderlands, which is a game that I played on the Xbox 360 quite a bit, and uh, this was actually the first version of this game that I played. I played it uh, a really long time ago uh, at a friend's house in high school. And at the time, I didn't like it. I grew to like it eventually when I played it again on 360, but, um, I don't know. But, uh, this is, this is definitely a fantastic first-person shooter. It sort of blends together elements of, like, Halo and Diablo. Like, it's a very loot-driven game. You go around, you do quests, you go through areas, and you get new weapons and, and the like. You just, you're just constantly looking for new loot to upgrade, and... It's really fun. It's a really well done game. Uh, the environments can get a little bit bland towards the end, but really, it's it's not that bad. I kind a lot of people have said that uh, the environments are all like you know they're all dusty, they're all desert, but I kind of like it. It's got a nice atmosphere to it. It's a really fun game overall, and it comes highly recommended if you like first person shooters or if you like RPGs because you know it takes a little bit of both and meshes it together into almost what you'd get if Diablo 2 was a first-person shooter. It's really, really good. And then, coming off of that, I've got Borderlands 2, another game I had on the Xbox 360, and I actually like this a lot better than Borderlands 1. Like, I love Borderlands 1, but this, I think, just tops it in so many ways, but it also has a few shortcomings. Most notably, it's, like, it's too big, I think. I like it when um, a game has enough content to keep you busy just for a while, but what I liked about Borderlands 1 in terms of its structure was you could sort of just, all of the quests were just sort of together. Like the plot missions and the side missions, they're all just in this one big pool of quests that you could just go through. And um, in this one, it feels a bit different, just because for the side quests, they have you running all over the place. You'll be going back and forth through areas you've cleared already. You'll be going back through areas you've out-leveled in some cases. And it starts getting to the point, um, I, I feel like Borderlands 1 was a bit more balanced with how it gave you a mix of main quests and side quests. But with this one... Late in the game especially, it gets to the point where for every one plot mission you get, you'll get like a dozen side missions, and it just starts really, really wearing down on you. And uh, normally I like it when games pack enough content to keep you, like, invested, because it makes it worth the high price tag. Games are expensive nowadays, you have to make it worth the purchase somehow. But I feel like Borderlands 2 sort of, I don't know, I feel like mechanically it's a much better game. I do prefer this over Borderlands 1, but it's just a much, much longer game and not necessarily for all the right reasons. Another thing I noticed is the PS3 version has some pretty crazy frame rate issues I've noticed. Um, I don't know if it's just the multiplayer because that's mostly what I've been playing. I've been playing online through the PlayStation Network. But, uh, I've been playing some of these parts, and man, it, it just, it dips. Like, it goes down to, like, five frames per second or something. Like, But uh, it doesn't break the game or anything. It's just a minor complaint. Um, it's, this, it's still the same great game that I loved on 360, and I will continue to like it on PlayStation 3. Highly recommended, especially now that it's gone down in price. A bit long, though. A bit more bloated than uh, its predecessor. Still a great game, though. And what we've got here, Demon Souls, uh, one of the exclusives that um, I mentioned earlier. And the uh, main reason I picked this up, I played Dark Souls on the 360, and I loved it. It's Dark Souls is my favorite video game of all time. 
I recently got into it. I played through it. I played through it again, mostly on New Game Plus. I never did finish New Game Plus, but it was a fantastic game. And I really, really wanted to play this. So uh, when I got the PS3, naturally, this is one of the first things I wanted to get. I was so excited to play this. Um, and it's definitely good. It's definitely a Souls game. It's very hard. Uh, I don't think it's quite as strong as Dark Souls. But it's still a fantastic game, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's played Dark Souls but not this. Especially if you've already beaten Dark Souls, because uh, people are pretty divided about which one is more difficult, but I feel like this one is definitely the harder of the two. Not necessarily because it's just a crate crazier, like it throws more shit at you. I feel like the difficulty curve is a lot more immediate in this one. Um, in Dark Souls, it was hard. It's, it's definitely a difficult game, and early on it's still difficult, especially if you're new to the game. But um, there's re really the big curve that comes later on that just ramps up the difficulty doesn't come till a little over halfway through the game. With this one, uh, by the second area, I was getting my ass kicked, and I'm completely used to the way these games handle. But uh, and there are little things that are different, like the healing system and whatever, but uh, on the whole, this is a really great game. I'm glad I picked it up. It's going to be a bit of a struggle to finish it. It's I still, I don't know, I, a lot of people might disagree, but I think it's much harder than Dark Souls. But still, really worth checking out um, if you were a fan of Dark Souls. Or if you just you haven't played either of the games and you're just looking for a really fucking hard game to play, then... This comes strongly recommended. Next up, of course, Dark Souls. Had to get this again. Uh, I loved this on the Xbox 360, and it's just as good on the PS3. Um, you know, wh what can I say? I said earlier, it's my favorite video game of all time. It has just the right level of challenge. It's incredibly hard without ever really being unfair. Uh, it just, it's just, a, there are so many different ways you can play it. I could just go on and just gush about this game for hours, but, uh, I love it. It's, um, it's a lot more open than Demon Souls. That's one thing, uh, I forgot to mention talking about Demon Souls. They're structured completely different. They play mostly the same, but Demon Souls is much more, like, you, you have a hub world and you go into these different areas and you unlock checkpoints to take you to different parts of those areas, whereas Dark Souls is much more open and um, you, you really don't gain the ability to sort of go between these checkpoints until much, much later in the game. And um, just such a fantastic game. Uh, I, I, this comes highly recommended. I would recommend it a bit more than Demon Souls to people who haven't played the uh, Souls game before, just because I personally feel it's a lot easier than Demon Souls. But that's just me. I don't know. Uh, I've heard a lot of different varying opinions on these games. I personally think this is the easier of the two, but that's not to say it's an easy game. It's still really hard. But um, I feel like once you get past the initial difficulty curve and start learning how to play the game, it, and it just clicks with you, it's loads of fun. You'll never be able to put it down. Believe me, it's such a fantastic game. I could just go on for hours. Not to mention the multiplayer is really fun, too. It's set up a bit weird, but it's loads of fun to go through and like help people fight these like huge bosses and get through these really tricky areas. Uh, Demon Souls has multiplayer as well, but I haven't been able to get into, um, I haven't been able to get it to work very well yet. I don't know if it's connection issues or people just don't, alright, got a bit cut off there, um, camera ran out of time, uh, in the middle of me talking about Dark Souls, but you get the point, fantastic game, buy it now. Another one of my favorite RPGs, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, and this, along with Borderlands, was one of the games that came with the PS3 Slim when I got it, and uh, I've played this on both PC and Xbox 360, so this is basically my third time playing this game, and I, I love Oblivion. 
I, I really like the Elder Scrolls games. I haven't been able to get into some of the older ones that well, even though I still appreciate them. But this is the first one that really sort of hooked me. Um, and I, I, I like it a lot. Um, it's definitely... The environments can get a bit similar throughout the game. And uh, the, the, the way the enemies scale to your level is kind of... I don't like it that much in this one because by level 20 something you're you've pretty much seen every enemy in the game. But uh really if if you like sort of open world RPGs like really that's what the Bethesda games usually are. Um if you haven't played this I'd say check it out like if you're if you've played Skyrim or Morrowind or any of the other ones that you haven't played this definitely give it a look and Something kind of funny about this copy is, um, it's the case for the original edition, but it's actually the Game of the Year disc, so it comes with all of the, or most of the DLC. I know it comes with the Shivering Isles, so it's kind of neat, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I like this game a lot. I've played it a lot. Um, there are definitely better RPGs, but I think, feel like this one just has kind of a charm to it. Like, I don't know, there's just something about it that always keeps me coming back, even when I've just done so much in it. I It's really cheap nowadays, too. You could, I think you can pick up the original edition for, like, five, eight dollars, something like that. Even the Game of the Year edition isn't that much. So, definitely recommend it. Another exclusive, and the last of the three games that initially came with the PS3... Little Big Planet, uh, the Game of the Year edition, so it comes with all the different like little bonus DLCs. I haven't played this one a whole lot, but I gotta say it's really good. Um, it's not, you know, the best platformer I've played. It's just sort of an okay little game that I, I like to just sort of put in when I'm in the mood to goof off. It's just sort of a goofy, charming game. It's it's really fun to play. It's a it feels a bit weird at times because it's a platformer that has kind of a large emphasis on physics, so it throws me off sometimes. I'm playing, like, this side-scrolling 2.5D platformer, and then I'll sort of, like, slide down a ledge, and I'll be trying to jump up, but I can't quite make it because of the way it's leaning. It's it's really fun. It's really bizarre. It's, um... You know, if you have a PlayStation 3, I would say check it out, because it's actually pretty cheap as far as I understand. And, uh, you know, like, it's it's just a very bright, charming game. It, it looks really good, too. The graphics are quite nice. And this came out, I think, in 2009 or 2008, something like that. But uh, I remember hearing a lot about this when it came out. And at the time, I wasn't, wasn't really that big on it. But playing it now, I like it a lot. Um, I've definitely played much better platformers. Like, there, there are definitely much better, like, side-scrolling platformers that I could recommend. But, uh, you know, I'd say this is worth picking up, especially, you know, if you're just looking to get a bunch of PS3 exclusives. This is definitely a pretty notable one. And this right here, along with Demon Souls, was one of the main reasons I wanted a PS3 for a while. Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. I have wanted to play this game since it came out back in 2008. I've been waiting like five years to play this thing. Because um, that was around the time I first got into Metal Gear Solid. I, around that time I picked up the Essential Collection for PS2, which contains MGS 1, 2, and 3. I played through all three of those in about the span of a month. And I enjoyed the hell out of all of them. Like, I usually don't go much for stealth games, but these were all just fantastic. And I actually really like the storyline that Metal Gear Solid has going for it and the whole cinematic approach. Like, I usually don't care much for, like, stories and video games, but it's just the whole cinematic approach is very well done in the Metal Gear Solid series, in my opinion. And 4 is no exception. Uh... The cutscenes are actually quite long in this one. I believe the ending alone, uh, I th it felt like it was nearly an hour. I, I don't know if it was quite that long, but this game, I, I loved it. A lot of people kind of rip on it for having really long cutscenes, but I, I enjoyed it a lot. 
Um, the story does get a bit crazy, but I, you know, I still kind of like it for that. I, I feel like the story in Metal Gear Solid hasn't always exactly been grounded. Like, this is definitely the craziest one I've played so far. But it's good. I like it. And uh, not to mention, I feel like this one really nails the gameplay well, too. There's a lot of freedom of movement. I like the octo camo thing. Like, you can sort of, like, blend into an individual texture. It's really cool. And, um, I don't know. This was just... I enjoyed this a lot. I'm so happy that I finally got the chance to play this game. I would definitely recommend it, but play the other games first. Uh, because... If you haven't played, like, the first three games that were in the Essential Collection, you're not going to have any idea what the fuck is going on. This game, it, it tries to explain bits of backstory, but I still feel like if you haven't played a Metal Gear Solid game before this, it'll be really, really hard to get into in terms of the story. But if you have played the first three games of an HD collection or whatever, definitely get it, because, um, you know... Like, people have their criticisms about it. Some people didn't like it because of how crazy it went with the cutscenes. I loved it. I'm definitely going to have to pick up Peace Walker HD on the PS3 at some point so I can know what the hell is going on when 5 comes out. I'm really looking forward to Metal Gear Solid 5. Resident Evil 5. Now, this is a game that um, people really don't seem to like. This is sort of, well, I, I guess for some people 4, but this is one of the games where people's opinions about the Resident Evil series started to split, because it was a much more action-oriented game than any of its uh, predecessors, um, even 4, which had started to go in a bit of a more action-oriented direction. And I'm not going to lie, I like this game. <laughs> I like all the Resident Evil games in the main series, really. The early ones are good horror games, the new ones are good action games. Uh, I really do think people just need to stop bitching about it and just sort of accept it for what it is. Because back... I, I played this on the Xbox 360 back when it first came out. This is actually the first 360 game uh, I ever got on the system. And at the time, I sort of, I sort of played through it once, never really went back to it. I uh, didn't really care for it because it was, you know, I, I thought of it as being more of an action game than a Resident Evil game. But then, not too long ago, I went back and revisited it, and um, I gotta say, I like it. I definitely don't like it as much as some of the other Resident Evil games, but the gameplay's still there. It's lots of fun. Um, you know, it's not scary or anything, but really, I don't... I'm going to be honest, I don't find the Resident Evil games to be that scary. Atmospheric sometimes, definitely, and loads of fun to play, but I've never really been genuinely scared by a Resident Evil game. I think the closest it, it ever came uh, was the remake of the first game for GameCube. That game was creepy as fuck. But all the other ones really never really sort of creeped me out or scared me at all, which really, I think that's one of the main reasons I like this so much. It's just the gameplay is fun. I can't, I, I after, after revisiting this game, I just can't hate it. It's uh, really good. I, I personally like it. The sort of tanky controls are still there, like in 4, but I don't mind, really. I'm so used to them that I, it doesn't bug me at all, really. And lastly, here, I've got another Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 6. Now, controversial opinion time, I really like this game a lot. Um, I, like, people were divided over 5, but really, people hated this game when it came out. And really, when it was first announced, I wasn't too hot on it either. But after actually, you know, playing the demo and taking some time to really get into it, it's fantastic. Like, it's not... It's not a horror game, but like I said with 5, I don't really find the Resident Evil series to be that scary. I, I always appreciate it for its really cool monster designs and, you know, just the different areas you'd go to. And this is a fantastic action game. They finally, like, I think the tank, the old, like, sort of survival horror tank controls, they work for the old ones because that's what they're supposed to be. 
But with four and five, the the controls felt a little out of place. Like they never bugged me that much, just because I always thought of it as just a Resident Evil game, but from the third person perspective. That's how they played. But six just completely ditches that and gives you normal third person shooter controls finally. And I gotta say, it, it controls so well, it plays so well. I like this game a lot. And um, really, I actually don't get why people hate this so much. It's definitely a step up from 5. And after playing through this, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see where they take the series. Like if they make a Resident Evil 7. I'm sure they'll make a Resident Evil 7. But, uh, you know, 2012 was a very good year for uh, Resident Evil games. Revelations came out, which is a fantastic sort of, like, throwback to the old games, uh, sort of a more horror sort of atmosphere, slower pace, and this one was just fantastic action game, just all sorts of crazy shit happening. Like, that's the reason a lot of people hate it, but it's the reason I like it. It's just an absolutely crazy, over-the-top action game, which I think for a modern Resident Evil, it works. Because Resident Evil's always been crazy, just, you know, in varying ways throughout the series. I think uh, this is definitely a very strong game, and in my opinion, a step in the right direction. Now, a lot of people are not at all going to agree with that, but, you know, what are you going to do? You can't please everyone. That's kind of what they tried to do with this game, because there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of, like, survival horror elements with Leon's campaign. There's, like, action. There's even a little bit of stealth. But, um, I liked it. A lot of other people don't. Whatever. You know, we all have our opinions. I personally love every Resident Evil game in the main series. Five and six, I think, just as good as some of the other, like, uh, Resident Evil games that people just praise. But, um, that's... Like, this right here, this whole pile, that's the, uh, these are all the games I got for my PS3 Slim. There are some others I still need to, there are some other 360 games I still need to replace, like, uh, Rayman, or I think most notably Rayman Origins, Nier, um, as well as Bioshock Infinite and Skyrim, but I haven't sold the 360 versions of those, because... Uh, Skyrim and Infinite are still fairly up there in price. At least Skyrim, because I want to get the I, I want to get the Legendary Edition that has like the all of the add-ons just right on the disc. And that one just came out, so of course it's still going to be sixty. And one more thing that I wanted to talk about to wrap up the video on was actually the controller for the PS3, which I like quite a bit. There are, have definitely been a few changes. Uh, from the DualShock 2 to the DualShock 3, which I actually like quite a bit. Most notably, the uh, L2 and R2 buttons actually being like sort of triggers that push in. It gives a lot more feedback when you're uh, playing the games than instead of just the like simple clicking of the L2 and R2 from the first two DualShocks. Even the L1 and R1 buttons feel a bit more responsive. Just the controller as a whole. Like, the analog sticks, they're, they're sort of, they're, there's more feedback. Just everything feels much nicer and more responsive. This is a very well-put-together controller, and I definitely like it a lot. Definitely my favorite PlayStation controller there is. Uh, I'm curious to see how the DualShock 4 turns out on the PlayStation 4 when that comes out. Not sure when I'll actually get one, but uh, I certainly would like to at some point. Because uh, the PlayStation 3 so far has definitely made a good impression on me. I like it a lot. And um, just the whole bundle is very nice. The good console, good controller, good games. Pretty happy with it. Alright, so that was my PS3 Slim Impressions video. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be putting, at least trying to put videos out a little more often now. I'm going to aim for at least one per month. Um, well, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Till next time.
long time, and this is one I'm pretty excited to... <clears throat> hey everyone, welcome back to my first new video. Welcome back to my... Ah. Hey everyone, I'm here with my first new video in a really long time, and it's one that I'm pretty excited to do just because... Uh, was actually the controller for the PS3 Slim, or, well, this is the model that, uh, dick. Alright, well, that was my first impressions video of the PS3 Slim, as well as a look at the games that I got, uh, for it. Damn it! I lost it. I, I had it, and then it was gone. Alright, well, that was my impressions video for the PlayStation 3 Slim. I can't... Ah, uh, fuck. Alright, well, that was my impressions video for the PS3 Slim. <laughs> Alright, well, that was my impressions video for the PS3 Slim. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it. I can talk! <laughs> Alright, well that was my PS3 Slim Impressions video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, be sure to subscribe. If you... Fuck, I did it again! Oh my god! Okay. <clears throat>